Good afternoon, this is Rick with TacRaven Solutions and welcome to our channel. In this lesson, we will be talking about a hack that involved PlayStation Network along with a man named Mr. George Hotz. Please like and subscribe as it will help us grow. You can do this by clicking on the subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and let's get to it. Five years ago, PlayStation Network was hacked and personal details of 77 million users accessed. Why was it a big deal? Well, because of a few reasons. Number one, it affected me personally because I love gaming, as do most, but it was also the largest security breach of its kind to ever hit console gamers, and an event with huge repercussions for PlayStation. It not only affected them both in the short term for its users, but they also left for weeks without access to online services, and longer term as Sony sought to win back customer trust. Less than a week later, HOTS released the exploit to the public. On March 28, 2010, Sony responded by announcing their intention to release a PlayStation 3 firmware update that would remove other OS feature from all models, a feature that was already absent in the newer slim versions of the machine. On July 13, 2010, HOTS posted a message on his Twitter account stating that he had abandoned his efforts. Then, on January 11, 2011, Sony sued George Hotz and Fail Overflow members Hector Martin and Sven Peter on eight claims including violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, computer fraud, and copyright infringement. In response to the suit, Carnegie Mellon University professor David S. Turetsky mirrored Hotz's writing and issued a statement supporting that Hotz's publication is within his rights to free speech. On January 27, 2011, Sony's request for a temporary restraining order was granted by the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California. This forbade him from distributing the jailbreak, helping and encouraging others to jailbreak and distributing information they learned during the creation of the jailbreak. It also ordered him to turn over computers and storage media used in the creation of the jailbreak to Sony's lawyers. Professor Turetsky's mirror was voluntarily censored following the issue of the TRO, but Hotz's writings and software have been mirrored elsewhere. On February 12, 2011, Hotz posted a one-minute diss track against Sony on his official YouTube channel in relation to the lawsuit. Then on February 19, 2011, Hotz started a blog about the Sony lawsuit. Anonymous was upset with Sony's legal actions against PS3 jailbreaker George Hotz, a segment of Anonymous launched Operation Sony on April 2nd to protest Sony suing George Hotz. In Anonymous's eyes, the information that GeoHot or George Hotz had discovered, how to run pirated games, how to homebrew software, was now in the public domain. And if anything, Hotz had done Sony a favor actually by exposing the company's own gap. On March 6, 2011, the court issued an approval that Sony's lawyers were allowing access to all IP addresses of all the people who had visited GeoHotz's blog for the purpose of establishing jurisdiction. Sony said the server logs would demonstrate that many of those who downloaded Hotz's hack reside in Northern California, thus making San Francisco a proper venue for the case. The case was then settled out of court and George Hotz agreed to take down his site on April 11th. From there, Dissatisfied members declared April 16th a day of protest for Sony and actually organized a 24-hour in-store boycott at Sony stores around the world. A video message warned, prepare for the biggest attack you've ever witnessed, anonymous style. Cyber attackers then breached PSN, PlayStation Network, Sony Online Entertainment, and Curiosity between April 16th and April 17th. The group eventually stopped their attacks, coming to the realization that they were only hurting Sony's end users, the gamers. But a couple weeks later, on April 19, 2011, PlayStation Network was then hit again. This time, it was different. Two days passed, then Sony itself quietly pulled PlayStation Network offline. On April 21st, the platform holder informed PlayStation Network users that, as you are no doubt aware, the current emergency outage is continuing this afternoon and all Sony online network services remain unavailable. Our support teams are investigating the cause of the problem, including the possibility of targeted behavior by an outside party. Our engineers are continuing to work to restore and maintain the services and we appreciate our customers continued support. It was the first day of the PlayStation Network outage. The network would not come online again for another three weeks, being 
May 14th. As the first day wore on, Sony warned its customers it could take up to 48 hours before they could log in again. The following day, Sony confessed there had been an external intrusion and now it's conducting a thorough investigation to verify the smooth and secure operation of our network services going forward. But so far, there had been no warning anyone else's personal informational details were at risk. That news would not be confirmed by Sony for another four days. A week into the outage, Sony had remained silent on the exact cause. Speculation centered on Sony pulling the plug on PlayStation Network to thwart further attempts at its systems. The updates from Sony itself remained positive, if slightly evasive. Sony's engineers were working around the clock to restore services and PlayStation Network users were repeatedly reassured. It was the evening of the 26th of April when Sony finally broke the bad news. The personal details of millions have been compromised. Although we are still investigating the details of this incident, we believe that an unauthorized person has obtained the following information that you provided, Sony admitted. This meant users' names, home addresses, email addresses, birth dates, PlayStation Network passwords, and usernames. PlayStation Network profile data, purchase history and billing address, and security question answers were also at risk. Worse, Sony could not only rule out the possibility that credit card data had also been stolen, if you have provided your credit card through PlayStation Network, to be on the safe side, we are advising that your credit card number, accept your security code, and expiration date may have been obtained, Sony concluded. When word broke that details had been indeed stolen, gamers were understandably very angry. Not only had Sony's systems failed, the company had taken a full week to make sure that PlayStation Network users were aware. Within hours, an embattled Sony was forced to explain why it waited so long to tell its customers the extent of the damage. There's a difference in timing between when we identified there was an intrusion and we went and learned of the consumer's data being compromised. We learned that there was an intrusion on the 19th of April and subsequently shut down the services. We then brought in outside experts to help us learn how the intrusion occurred and to conduct an investigation to determine the nature and the scope of the incident. It was necessary to conduct several days of forensic analysis and it took our experts until yesterday to understand the scope of the breach. We then shared that information with our consumers and announced it publicly this afternoon. Aided by some of the most respected forensics and security experts in the computer industry. PlayStation Network users rushed to change their passwords elsewhere but could not alter their details on PlayStation Network itself as the service remained offline. Within 24 hours, the first class action lawsuit had been filed. Meanwhile, analysts were quick to point out the huge task Sony had ahead of it to regain user trust. In the days that followed, PlayStation Network remained offline. Anonymous was implicated in the attack. The UK government weighed in and promised in an investigation from the Information Commissioner's Office, and Sony Corporation boss Sir Howard Stringer posted an open letter of apology. His message read this, Dear friends, I know this has been a frustrating time for all of you. To date, there is no confirmed evidence any credit card or personal information has been misused, and we continue to monitor the situation closely. On May 1st, Sony hosted a press conference in Tokyo to outline the new security measures it was implementing. More apologies were offered, and a welcome back program for PlayStation Network customers was outlined for when the service resumed. PlayStation 3 and PSP owners would be offered two free games per system along with 30 days of free PlayStation Plus subscription, which I unfortunately did not partake in. Sony also said it would offer subscribers a year of free identity theft protection. Many were pleased with these announcements, although some PS3 owners complained that they already had the games or the titles that were already being offered. PS3 owners had a choice of Dead Nation, Infamous, Little Big Planet, Ratchet & Clank, Quest for Booty, and Wipeout HD plus Fury. PSP owners got to choose two games from Little Big Planet PSP, Mod Nation Racers, Pursuit Force, and Killzone Liberation. New PlayStation Network security measures promised included higher levels of data protection and encryption, additional firewalls, plus new early warning software. This criminal act against our network had a significant impact not only on our consumers, but our entire industry, said the Sony exec. We have learned lessons along the way about the valued relationship of our consumers. But questions remained around how hackers had managed to access the information in the first place. 
Evidence then was uncovered in the days pointed to Sony systems as being obsolete and long outdated, charges which Sony of course denied. However, a later report suggested that Sony had to let go of their security staff prior to the attack and ignored warnings that a privacy breach was actually possible. So by the middle of the month, Sony was beginning to restore PlayStation Network functionality in different phases, region by region, service by service. PlayStation Network returned to life in the UK on the 14th of May. There is more though. Us gamers weren't the only ones that were affected. Sony was then forced to apologize to developers whose game launches were disrupted by the attack or whose online services were rendered unavailable. Capcom exec Christian Svensson was one of the few to speak publicly, memorably complaining that he was frustrated and upset. The publisher was down hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and then others were less phased. Inevitably, when PlayStation Network did return, there were several days of issues as all the users were trying to request a password reset via email, which then of course crashed Sony's email server. Sony initially estimated the hack would cost at least $114 million, although the company later suggested that the impact has not been as financially damaging as it once feared. PlayStation Network did bounce back, adding another 3 million users in the four months following the attack. Jack Trenton, the US Sony boss, tackled the issue head-on at the start of Sony's E3 2011 press conference, apologizing again for the anxiety that was caused. You are the lifeblood of the company, Trenton said. Without you, there is no PlayStation. I want to apologize personally. It's you that causes us to be humbled and amazed by the support that you continue to give. Sony at one point faced 55 class action lawsuits and eventually agreed to offer up further compensation for those affected. Details of it took until last year to be finalized, by which time PS3 had long been replaced and the success of PS4 had made the whole saga a distant memory. But Sony is still upgrading its systems. Just last week, Sony announced it would finally introduce two-step verification three years after Microsoft did the same for Xbox Live. Being a witness to this big hack that went down, we can clearly see that hacking can cause a great deal of damage all around the world. If anything was learned from this experience on Sony's behalf, it might be simply to say thank you for exposing what we did not know and here's possibly a job offer to fix the issue, rather than take the route that they did. Once again, we want to thank you for taking the time to join us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to be notified of future releases of related videos. Y'all have a wonderful day and thanks again for joining.